How are you, my friends? In this uh, video, I'm presenting eight old exams questions related to graphs of sine and cosine functions. The, these questions are coming from lectures 15 and 16. Question number one, we have to graph the sine absolute value of x, find the range and see where the graph is below the x. That's a really important question. So if we have to graph something absolute value on the x, we start, we know this is the sine function, the original basic sine function. Now the absolute value on the x, we take two cases because x can be positive or x can be negative. So I put it here two separate, just be careful here, please. If the x is positive, see the x here is positive, then the absolute value of the x is equal to x. We know that from the algebra course. So let's call it now p of x. See here, p of x, positive. n of x, negative. That's a function. That's another function. And this is function f that we need. So be careful here. We have function f, sine absolute value of x. We need to graph that. This is the basic one, only sine x. This is p of x, which is sine only x positive. See, it will be this graph here. See this part, same as this part. All right, now let's take, if x is negative, the absolute value will be, by definition, it will be minus x because x is minus. So the absolute value will be minus. So now n of x will be sine of minus x, which is minus sine x because the function sine is odd. So let's graph now minus sine of x. So we take that one, see in the negative x only, only in the negative x, we make reflection. You see this one? See, this is the part on the sine. We make reflection on the x-axis, so it becomes like this. So that's the part in the negative. Negative x becomes the function n of x. So this is the same as this function x negative, and this is where x positive. So we have to join now these two parts. Now let's see the final graph of the function sine absolute value. So nice graph. So the range now is minus one to one. Yeah. And then we have to mention where the graph is below the X. See below the X only from this given interval minus three pi over two to three pi over two. So this is above, this is above below is minus three pi over two to minus pi union from pi to three pi over two. See, this is the red part only that's below. Question number two, we have the graph of the sine, a sine bx. Let's find 4ab divided by, divided by pi. Now, question number two solution, we see from the graph here that the period is four. So this is zero to four. That's one period. And the formula for the period two pi over k, k in this case is capital B, is equal to four given from the graph. So B will be pi over two. Now we see the amplitude here, the amplitude will be three, but we have a reflection on the graph. See the graph usually in the uh, sign, it will start from zero there. So since we have a reflection in the x-axis, so A, capital A will be minus three. So I put here four minus three for the A, B is pi over two divided by pi, it will be minus six. See the answer here, E is minus six. The answers are there also. All right, question number three. We have a function d plus a sine 10 pi m x, where a is less than zero. The range minus half to 19 over two, and the period is two over 45. Let's find m plus d plus a. So there's a question similar in the lecture. You can check that. Now let's use the definition of the amplitude. We know the amplitude will be the maximum minus the minimum divided by two is equal absolute value of A. 
See, this is the same as a the coefficient of the sine. So 19 over 2 is the maximum, because the maximum comes from the range. The minimum also comes from the range. So 19 over 2 minus, minus half divided by 2. So this will be 20 over 2. That's 10 over 2, 5. So A will be minus 5. So now the function becomes D minus 5 sine 10 pi mx. Now let's use the range formula. D minus absolute value of A, D plus absolute value of A. So this will be D minus absolute value of minus 5, D plus absolute value of minus 5, which is D minus 5, D plus 5 is equal to this range. So you can take this one, D minus 5 is equal minus half, or D plus 5 equals 19 over 2. It will give you the same answer here. So D will be 9 over 2. Let's continue now. So D is 9 over 2, A is minus 5. What's left is the M. All right, so let's take the period 2 pi over K. What is K in our question? Look here, what is K? The K is 10 pi M, all the coefficient of the X. So 10 pi M, that's the K. 2 pi from the formula and given 2 over 45. So we cancel here the pi, 2 over 45, cancel the 2, 1 over 5 M. Now cancel here the 5 also, you can multiply by 5. So M will be 9 over 2. So now the function becomes 9 over 2 minus 5 sine 45 pi X. Just put the M there, 9 over 2. Okay. So M, 9 over 2. D, 9 over 2. A is minus 5. So when you add all this, you get 4. Now find the number of x-intercept of this function over the interval minus 17 pi over 2. Closed until 7 pi open. The first, we have to rearrange the function and find the correct argument. So this three, the inside one, we distribute that in the bracket, two X divided by five minus three pi over five. So now the correct argument will be two X over five minus three pi over five. Now to find X intercept of this sine function, we put the argument equals to N pi where n is integer. So I take the argument 2x over 5 minus 3 pi over 5 is equal n pi. So 2x over 5 is equal this one plus n pi multiply by 5 over 2 to get x. So you multiply by 5 over 2, 5 over 2. So we have here x will be 3 pi over 2 plus 5 pi n over 2, where n is integer. This is the equation of all x intercepts. Now, we need to know how many x intercept in this interval closed minus 17 pi over 2 to 7 pi open. That's given in the question. So we create an inequality. We take the equation 3 pi over 2 plus 5 pi n over 2 between closed minus 17 pi over 2 and open 7 pi. Then we subtract 3 pi over 2 from each side. See? And here we find the um, uh, combined fractions. Uh, 20, this is uh, 14, minus 3, 11 pi over 2, multiply by 2 over 5 pi to get n. 2 over 5 pi, so this is 11 over pi, multiply by 2 over 5, this will be minus 4. So let's find all the ends between minus 4 closed, less than 11 over 5. Now 11 over 5, if you divide it, it will be 2.2. So we take 2, less than that, see, integer, integer. And minus 4 is closed, so we take minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, and 2. So how many? These are 7 x-intercepts. So this will give us the number of x-intercept. Where the graph of this cosine is above the x. 
See, first you have to draw it. The amplitude here will be three, the absolute value of the minus three, which is positive, always absolute, the amplitude is positive. The period two pi over k, k will be three, this inside three. The correct argument will be three x minus pi over two. This is the correct argument. So to um, see the first period, let's find S. S will be, put the argument is equal to zero. So three X minus pi over two is equal to zero. X will be pi over six. See, this is where the period starts. All right, put argument is equal to pi, we get E where the period ends. So three X minus pi over two is equal to pi. Take it on the other side, divide by three, E will be five pi over six. So this is the period, one period. Now to know these numbers inside, we can divide the period into four equal parts. So S and then S plus P over four, S plus P over two, S plus three P over four, S plus P, that's E and that's S. Now, since we need the, uh, the interval, the given interval from pi over six until seven pi over six, See, what can we do? We have one period there, the green one. We can draw another period because each period is two pi over three. See, the period here, two pi over three. So we can add as many periods as we like. So we can draw another period. Now let's see the given interval from pi over six here until seven pi over six. So period and a half. So where is the graph above the X? See, this is the black dash above the x from pi over three to two pi over three, union from pi to seven pi over three. This is closed here because that's above the x. See, above the x. Okay, in the given interval, pi over six to seven pi over six. Now let's find the interval of the intervals where the graph is increasing of this whole absolute value two cosine pi x over two between the interval in the interval minus two to two. Now to graph the absolute value of two cosine pi x over two, let's graph the function without absolute value first. That's easy to do. That's a cosine, find the period will be two pi over k. So the period will be four, you see four. And then the amplitude here is two. The period starts from zero, it will end at four. So that's the graph, easy to do. You can divide the period into four equal parts. Now, what do we do? We need the absolute value of the whole function. That means y positive. So all the parts below the x, see this is below the x, that means y negative. Make it above the x. See, this is the graph now. Now let's see on the next slide, this is the graph. The blue one is the graph of the absolute value, two cosine pi x over two. We need the interval from minus two to two, from minus two to two, where the graph is increasing. So I changed the color here from minus two to two. See the increasing minus one to zero, that's increasing. And then union one to two. This is the same graph, but I showed you the increasing part. Now question number seven, given the function two minus five cosine two pi x plus four pi, if the period is P and the phase shift is D and the range is V W, find the value of P times D times V times W. Let's find each one separate. So the period here, we start the period. Period is two pi over k. K is the coefficient of the x. So two pi over two pi, p is one, easy. The phase shift let the correct argument is equal to zero. So two pi x plus four pi is equal to zero. X will be minus two, which is d. Or another way, you can take two pi from here outside the cosine, then you will see x plus two. So D will be minus two, because this is shifted on the left. So the phase shift is minus. So this is minus two. General formula for the range for the sine and the cosine, D minus absolute value of A, D plus absolute value of A. D 
in this case is 2. And the a by itself is minus 5, but we have to have absolute value of minus 5. So minus 3 and 7. So let's multiply 1 and minus 2 for the d, minus 3 and 7. So altogether will be 42. Question number 8, given the graph of the cosine, he said a cosine nx plus d. Now, if we look at the graph, we see that S where the period starts and E where the period ends. So let's find the period now, absolute value of E minus S. You know, like if we have two numbers, we need to find the distance between them. We use absolute value of A minus B on the same horizontal line. So this is absolute value of uh, pi over two minus, minus pi over six. When you add these combined fractions, you get two pi over, now the period by the formula, 2 pi over k, so 2 pi over 3 is equal to 2 pi over k, so k will be 3. Now the amplitude we see here is 3, and the amplitude is the absolute value of a. Since we have a reflection in the x-axis, so a will be minus 3. Now the phase shift here, minus pi over 6, so b is minus pi over 6. Now let's use the values of a minus three, k is equal to three and b minus pi over six. Use the general cosine to build the function. So we have a is minus three cosine k, three x plus pi over six. Let's multiply the three inside. So we have minus three cosine three x plus pi over two. We compare it now with the given, this is in the given. So a minus three, the n here is the three and the d is inside pi over 2. So let's multiply a and d. Minus 3, minus 3, pi over 2 will be minus 9 pi over 2. Now, these are the answers of the eight questions. Uh, for other examples, please, you can see the videos on lecture 15, graphs of sine functions, and lecture 16, graphs of the cosine functions. So there are two lectures with many information and examples. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, you can subscribe and share it with your friends. I wish I can see you in another video with another topic. Thank you very much.